More K contents, more K news, more Korea now. And welcome back, everyone. You're tuning into the second hour of our Thursday's edition of Korea Now. Once again, I'm your host, SJ Lee. Coming up next in the second hour, we have a very fun interview in store for all of our listeners out there during Issue Now. As you know, uh, a lot of people around the world have been really, really fascinated and enjoying uh, Korean instant noodles, uh, also known as ramyeon. Uh, there is a man who has been call being called... He hasn't been calling himself this. Many people have been calling him the God of Ramyun after reviewing all sorts of Ramyun, releasing the world's top 10 Ramyun every single year. Uh, we're going to be talking about the taste of Korean instant noodles with Hans Ranesh uh, joining us, who also, by the way, runs a website called the RamyunRadar.com. It's quite interesting. I want to check this out myself. So that interview is coming up next, but also in the second hour, we'll be having our music critic Kim young Dae join us for the latest in Back to the Culture to talk about music, culture, and everything that affects reflects the Korean society and the trends of South Korea. That's all coming up next in the second hour of our Thursday's program. So without further ado, Issue Now, all coming up next. All right, so here's a question. How much do you like ramyeon? Or how often do you have ramyeon? I guess uh, it's one of those things where I guess you love it, but you can't have so much of it because of, I guess, all the sodium and things like that. But hey, as more people spend time due to COVID-19, the demand, the demands for these simple and very quick way of eating, such as these instant foods like ramyeon, has been increasing. Uh, in fact, also because of the uh, ever so popular Korean film Parasite, Chapaguri has been all the more in the spotlight as well. So today, we're going to be talking to someone who's actually very sincere about ramen, has been reviewing all sorts of ramen around the world. For this, we have Hans Renesh joining us on the line. He runs the website ramen, the ramenraider.com, a very famous YouTuber as well. Hans, thank you very much for joining with us today. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I know it's uh, very early over there again, so uh, th thanks for uh, joining us in our program. But uh, very quickly, can you just uh, introduce yourself to our listeners? Well, let's see. I've been reviewing instant noodles since 2002, uh, most of them since 2010. I've tried over 4,000 different varieties, Jeez. and I, yeah, there's there's a lot of them. And I feel like I've barely touched the uh, the full spectrum of instant noodles that are on the market. And I, I really enjoy it. It's fascinating. I get to try something new every day. I Either I like it or I don't. But my motto is I, my favorite instant noodle is the one I haven't tried yet. So it's, it's, it's cool. It's a cool hobby. Yeah, you know, it's it's actually no wonder that a lot of the uh, Korean media outlets have actually been calling you God of Ramyun, right? <laughs> I didn't even know that there was <laughs> that many Ramyun. To be honest with you, over five, uh, sorry, 4,000 different varieties that you were able to check out. Um, but, you know, this basically means, again, I mean, you probably didn't, eat all the ramyuns that are available around the world, but you pretty much touched a lot of them, vast majority of them. I'm kind of curious. Let's start off with this. How did you even get interested in ramyun in the first place? Well, when I was very young, uh, my mother would make instant noodles, uh, a variety from a company in the U.S., and she would cook them, drain them, and then put two beaten eggs in with it and fry it up, and the noodles would just get a little bit crisp. And I'd have it for breakfast every once in a while. I really liked it. Well, that variety went off the market. And we lived in a little uh, fishing town called Anacortes, which is just north of Seattle. And in Seattle, there was a large Asian supermarket. And my father thought, hey, let's go down there and see if they've got something. And I was transfixed. I, I saw the instant noodle aisle and I saw all these different, you know, different languages and characters and the packaging just like popped out 
and I was I was hooked. I was like, wow, what are all these flavors from places I've never been? <laughs> so that's really what got me into it. You know, again, I think the most important thing here is the fact, just like your website says, that ramyonraider.com, uh, you tasted, graded a number of different ramyons, uh, introduced them to different people out there who watch your videos. Uh, again, I, I want to know, what's the most important criteria when it comes to rating some of these uh, noodles? Well, honestly, my only agenda are my taste buds, so <laughs> my tongue. You know, it, it tells me what I like and what I don't. Um, generally, though, if if you have something that's supposed to be, say, chicken flavor and it doesn't taste like chicken, yeah, that's a problem. If if you have noodles that are really more spongy and mushy and don't really have any, I call it backbone. Uh, others would call it a good cue, like elasticity, things like that. Um, that usually gets downgraded. But if it's got a really strong flavor, if it if it tastes really good and the noodles are great, then it gets a higher score. And if the opposite for if it doesn't, so. So is that out of like a, a ten score? Or how is the uh, the score? What's the highest score you can get? Uh, it's zero to five, okay. and they go in quarter point increments. So All right. I, I, at the beginning, I was doing it in tenths, and I was like. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the thing. I mean, you know, there's so many different ramens around the world. I mean, you have, again, you know, United States. I think a lot of people are uh, familiar with that uh, 49 cent uh, noodles uh, that college students uh, live off of. You have, of course, uh, ones in South Korea, China, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan. I mean, you name it, right? I mean, do you see, well, I guess, what's the biggest differences or like the characteristics of ramen by each country? Well, I mean, it's just the same with the local food. You're going to have varieties that, of, and instant noodles are kind of like a palate, you know, and, and the flavors and the additives you put on them are kind of like the pigments. And generally instant noodles get their color and flavor from local culture. So in Indonesia, you'll have mie goreng, which is like the most popular food there. Yeah, yeah. In Singapore, you'll have laksa. In Japan, you'll have more standard, you know, like shio miso shoyu and south korea well you've got uh what's my favorite stuff from over there i really like uh i like the bulldog quite a bit really that's a really good one yeah i do and uh honestly the one that has been driving me crazy for the last year or so has been that first one the samyang ramen right yeah, that one, the ham flavored one. I, I really like that one. It's a great one for breakfast. Yeah, wow. you, speaking of which, uh, you know, you annually pick top 10 instant noodles, and a lot of them, uh, that the Korean noodles that selected so far, you have like, again, you, you did talk about this Hamyang Namyeon, uh, Shin Namyeon Black's in the list as well, Puldak Namyeon, which again you said was uh, your favorite. Uh, the number one you chose was Puldak Namyeon. What is it about that uh, particular Namyeon that really just stands out from everything else? Because it is very different from some of the other Namyeons that you probably had. Oh, yeah. It's it's, it's a good one, especially the Carbo. The Carbo is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's just got this nice nice taste to it. It's it's The the one that I liked the most was had the Ramyeon noodle, and then it also had the Dokboki with yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, that, that was just like... That stinks. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. And the spicy list, Neville, it doesn't bother you at all. Oh, there's stuff on the spicy list that, oh, man. <laughs> there's uh, the Samyang, the 3X. Yeah. There's one on that list that's above that that makes the 3X taste like cotton candy. Okay. It's insanity. I mean, this stuff, I, I had it before... I had to go pick up my son from the bus and it literally, I, I've talked to other people who have had this particular variety and they were like, Oh yeah, everything that you were experiencing. Yeah. That's like when you start going into shock, there's, there's people that like things that are so spicy, they'll, they'll distill pepper extracts down and just basically take them like a shot. And it's so strong, your body will just go into shock. You get tingly, you get the cold, the sweats, and everything. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, I don't want to. I, I really don't want to do that one again. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> you a, know, a lot. I don't know if you try this or if you're kind of talking about the same one because there is a ramyeon here in Korea that's going viral uh, amongst a lot of the YouTubers who's been trying this. It's called the Yamna Taewang ramyeon. 
Uh, and what the package has, it's like it has is that a devil of fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one with the, the yeah. flames and the, the peppers all across the, uh, the the package and stuff like that. And you call it the spiciest in the world. Have you tried that yourself? Yeah, it's not. There's it, no way. It, it's not. The, it's not, it, it's <laughs> no. not the spiciest. No. And the problem is, is that a lot of these companies around the world will put a number in front of the letters SHU. Yeah. Now, there's no what they what, really what we need for the spicy crowd is an independent organization. They, they have it for for vegans. They have it for like uh, vitamin manufacturers. They need it for spicy because because I could I could take a banana, marinate it in hot sauce and hand it to you and say it's five million Scoville heat units. <laughs> and nobody's nobody's going to say like, hey, call these people. They'll they'll say he's wrong. And right. I would be wrong to do that. But right. they, they, you can put any number you want on a package. So there are there are ways using uh, spectrometry and different uh lab labs processes to figure out the actual per milliliter right. amount of heat generally if if most people see something that says it's really spicy and they like spicy food they're just going to give it a try so all right it's coming straight from the uh, god of ramen himself but also one of the <laughs> things that uh, i found out is that and rightfully so because you rate and review some of these uh, you know noodles that some of these uh, instant noodle companies actually send their products to you for you to review uh, I'm wondering mm -hmm. if there was any of the recent ones that uh, you have tried that you want to kind of recommend to uh, our listeners. Gosh, what have I had recently? I've had a oh, man. It, it's it's always such a blur. Um, have so many on, on a daily basis that I'm sure it is a blur. Yeah. Well, I yeah. Uh, we just <laughs> had the holidays, so I'm like I got out of it. Now I'm getting back into it, and. Uh, Gosh, I wish I wish I would get more from South Korea. Honestly, I I used to get more, and then I now I haven't gotten many lately. Um, gosh, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. It's two in the morning. Okay, um, so <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I can kind of understand uh, what's going on there. But how about this though? I think we kind of all when you talked about ones that you really liked. Um, were there particular ramens, Korean ramens, that really didn't suit your taste? It was a little bit off, and uh, really. Wasn't too much of your, I guess, uh, taste here. There's one, and this is the only one by this company. Mo most, most all Korean instant noodles, I like them very much. Uh, there was one though. What was it? Uh, Clara. It was it was a Paldo variety, and it had, I want to say, green tea. Chlorella, chlorella oh goodness all right that itself just really puts it out there i can understand yeah 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 so a lot of people like it though i mean they wouldn't make it unless people liked it so you know i'm just one voice in a chorus of consumers so <laughs> uh again i mean there's so many that uh, really stand out but here's something interesting and uh, one of our listeners uh, watson actually pointed out uh he uploaded he wrote that you uploaded chapaguri eight years ago and this is even before uh chapaguri became so popular because of uh, parasite yes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of you know people that have their own ways of making chapaguri, um, their own little recipe. Is there your kind of unique way of uh, you know making chapaguri? You know, I, I I made it eight years ago. So, <laughs> what, what did you watch? Like, what what was kind of the the recipe that you followed? Because I mean, you know, I know here in Korea, it kind of became popular because of a reality TV show. Yeah, and I, man, I can't remember. I don't know if. I don't know if it was mentioned to one of, from one of my readers. I don't know if Nongshim mentioned it to me. That's okay. possible. But yeah, and what was kind of neat too is in the video you might see at the beginning, the uh, I kind of like chopped the two logos and put them together, and they came out with the same product here recently, which kind of is about the same thing, which I think thought was kind of neat. So it's like, okay. You have a lot of these, uh, I guess, uh, instant noodle companies uh, sometimes sending you these stuff, uh, you know, Korean viewers uh, on your, uh, you know, YouTube channel and your website as well. Have you actually visited Korea and, uh, you know, checked out some of these products yourself? 
No, and I'd really love to visit South Korea someday. Uh, I've been to Taiwan, Thailand, and Malaysia, and definitely South Korea is on my list of places I really would like to go. Yeah, I that's mean, for sure. you know, again, I mean, there's so many different varieties that are popping up these days, and I'm sure you, you can try them out here. But here's another thing. Um, there's always been kind of a, a huge debate over how to create these ramen, uh, whether or not uh, you put the soup in first or the noodle in first, uh, do you put in before you boil the water? Is it, you know, after you, the bo water boils, do you put eggs or not? Do you kind of break the eggs? All sorts of different things. Is there a specific way that you cook the ramyun? If I'm just going to, when, when, when I do reviews, I cook the noodle by itself per package instruction. So, it, you know, if I do that for every single noodle, everything's on a same playing field when I do the actual tasting and review. Okay. But if I'm cooking something for myself, Usually I will take uh, green onion, cut them in about three quarter inch lengths. I'll drop that in pretty early on so that gets into the broth. I will definitely throw beef in there and put that in about three quarters of the way through. We usually use thin sliced beef. Right. And uh, egg usually in the last minute or so. And I'll just crack it and drop it right in. But if, you know, sometimes I might feel like stirring it in. So and cheese cheese oh. is a must yeah you know cheese is the other thing right i mean that's the that's one of those things that the koreans have been starting to uh, enjoy as well um, i'm wondering also if you go the korean route and after you eat all the noodles you put in some uh, white rice in there and just mix mm -hmm. it up and eat it yeah i've done that <laughs> <laughs> man who has never come sure. to korea but uh to be honest with you when it comes to the eating ways he's uh, more korean than a lot of us here <laughs> i'm also kind of uh, curious uh when it comes to um i guess uh I i'm looking at you right now in our zoom and uh, let's face it as as delicious as ramyun is ramyun is not that healthy uh you look very fit for a person who actually eats ramen for a living here <laughs> is, is that sometimes a concern for you I, I, how do you keep in shape uh, eating all the ramen on a daily basis kind of making a living out of all this well in 2018 my doctor told me that unless i changed my ways i would be put on a drug for high cholesterol okay. and we had a one-year-old daughter at the time she's now older and uh i thought well i need to do something so i got a jogging stroller and i changed my diet and when i started when i was doing my reviews I would basically only have started only having maybe kind of like somebody was, that was doing wine tasting, mm. you know, that would just like, you just have a little bit, you know, just like a taste of the noodle, taste of the broth, that's it. And by doing that, I lost 150 pounds. What? So, and I, and I walk every day, a one, let's see, one, the most I've walked in one day is 30, was that 30 or 35? I think it was 30 miles in one day. Today I walked uh, eight, and I try to walk at least ten a day, but it's been crummy weather here in the Seattle area. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that that's one of the aspects that people don't kind of uh, know is that a lot of the YouTubers or any you know any content creators when they're doing a lot of the eating contents, that there's also a lot of working out and a lot of exercising that come with it. And I think oh, that's, yeah, the, yeah. that's the, the hardest part about that. But uh, again, I get a lot of people that really don't like that aspect when I mention it either. They're like, you're really? wasting food. And it's just like, well, I can either waste it or I can gain a waste. So <laughs> it's kind of like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the healthy side. I, I like it when my doctor is happy with what I'm doing. So that's the way I go. For yeah, it. again, I mean, just, uh, you know, looking at you, you look very fit. And that's one of the concerns that a lot of people have when you're eating a lot of these uh, high sodium content uh, that Damian is. Uh, it's really hard to keep up a good uh, lifestyle. But uh, speaking of which, I mean, you know, New Year right now. Uh, I guess I should have said this earlier on. Happy New Year's to you. Uh, anything Happy you're <laughs> anything you're looking forward to doing? Anything new that you're trying to do uh, with your website and your content for the New Year? Yeah, actually. Um, well, I've got a show called uh, Instant Noodle Recipe Time on YouTube, and I'm about to hit. I think. Yeah, you know, I just hit my 1300th episode. But anyways. Um, I got, my wife got me an erhu, which is a Chinese bowed instrument, kind of like a, not a violin, but it, you hold it upright, kind of like a cello. Right. And it has two strings and it has a bow and I want to learn how to play it. So that's, <laughs> that's my new year's resolution. And so far 
I've had absolutely no success with this thing. It's it's driven me bonkers. I'm really frustrated. All the uh, instructions were in Chinese. That usually doesn't stop me because I have to translate a lot of stuff for what I do. But this this thing, man, I'll I'll get there. Man, he's gonna go from a noodle uh, rating uh, YouTuber to playing music on YouTube from now mm -hmm. on. Hans, listen. Oh, I'll play it while I'm doing my show. That's the idea. All so, right. Yeah. There you have it, Hans. Again, you know, I know it's early morning there. Thank you very much for connecting with us. Uh, keep up the great work and really looking forward to seeing more videos from you. Right on. I think I said that right. <laughs> there you I go. Think I said that. You said that correct. All right, Hans. Take care and cool. uh, looking forward to talking to you in the future. Right on. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. That was uh, Hans Lanesh with, uh, of course, the ramyanraider.com. Do stick around. We have Back to the Culture all coming up next. I'm in London. I'm in Australia. Tokyo. The Philippines. Finland. Indonesia. New York. Arirang Radio. Radio. Now live in Seoul.